Uh, that's all I'm going to show you for tomorrow's updates. I'm going to move on to the uh, Wilderness Wars update, which will be on Saturday, I believe. Saturday. So, exciting stuff. I'm actually going to get rid of this spectator, and in fact, I'm going to show this account first. So, if you're playing inside of the tournament and you're a fighter, uh, you'll log in and you'll have to redeem your code again. I have a handy little debug cheat right here, which is uh, Wild Wars underscore uh, redeem. And what team should I be on? Polvesta, Borti, Sick Nerd, Night or, or Curses? See what they spam. See what they spam. Whose team should I be on? Who's going to win? Yeah. Well, obviously, Sick Nerd, so I'm going to go on Sick Nerd's team. Oh, course, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'll be a champion, um, so I will pretend to be Sick Oh, no, actually, I'm on Nightinator's team because I put six in. Never mind, I'm on Nightinator's team. Okay. I typed the wrong number, don't worry. Uh, after you've redeemed your code, you'll be given a highlight color and a cape, and you'll have uh, the slide portals, barriers here that you can go through depending on your team. Nightinator's is purple or pink, I don't know what color that you'd call that. And over here, you can set up exactly what you're doing if you're a fighter. There is uh, an altar to change your prayer books and tournament supplies. Now, the tournament supplies are a little bit different than the ones that you find on most tournament worlds. Uh, they've been limited specifically for Wildy Balls, and they also have some unique interactions with some of the bosses that I'll show you in a second, so I'm going to withdraw some of them. Uh, now, uh, what am I missing? I'm missing that. I'm going to take that out as well, and I'll take that out. Weapon. I'm missing that and that and that. Awesome. Uh, as the spectator over here, I'm going to start the match. Uh, and we're going to pretend like there's 50 people in each army, as well as all five champions online. So we're going to start Wilderness Wars. And as I was Nightinator, oh, this is the, uh, the interface, by the way. I think Modjed did a great job on this interface. This is what you guys will be able to, uh, to see on the day. There'll also be some other things probably put up uh, post-production, but it's an incredible spectator tool to be able to see how many people are left in the army. Nightinator has one person. It also shows her health. Teleports for the spectators, which is excellent. And you'll notice that Nightinator has started over here. We do actually have a picture as well, that I believe we've tweeted out already, of where all of the champions are starting their locations. Uh, I th we can probably get that, maybe. Modron, is that all right? Uh, can you get the... No, we'll get to that one in a minute, actually. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So please do check out the old school Twitter if you want to be able to see where their starting locations are. And now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some of the bosses. So I'm going to make myself not able to die, because that would be embarrassing. I'm not going to scuff this stream any further, because I've clearly messed up earlier on. I'll make sure I don't die. And I'm going to go to the location of one of the new bosses. 0, 47, 57, 62, 42. Uh, so I believe that this is going to take me to the armor boss. Now, the armor boss looks an awful lot like Callisto, because it is Callisto, um, the model. But he has a substantially larger health pool, a 1500. And when you kill him, the armor that you're wearing will upgrade for the entirety of your team. So fighters, all of your armor will be upgraded. Uh, for a champion, all armor in your inventory as well will also be upgraded uh, to different things depending on the armor that you have. So I'm going to show you now, if I just cheat again and go max me and instantly kill this, because I'm a champion, all of my armor will upgrade, even stuff that I'm not wearing. Here we go. And there we go. So all my, uh, my black dragonhide armor has turned into carols, uh, my uh, runite has turned into torags, and the skirt turned into a varex plate skirt, my boots have turned into dragon boots. You get the point. We also have um, a tweet that we've just put out that will show you all of the upgrades, which is right there. No, there. There you go. Oh, there you go. Which will show you everything that will be turned into, depending on whether or not you're a fighter or you're a champion. I'm going to go ahead and teleport to the weapon uh, upgrading boss and show you that as well. Uh, 57, 3, 13. And similarly, when I kill this, if you're a fighter, it'll upgrade the weapon that you're wearing. And since I'm a champion in this scenario, I'm technically Nightinator right now. Um, it'll upgrade all... Sorry, I need to put my cheat on. Uh, it'll upgrade all of my weapons. On top of that, as you can probably see inside of the infographic that was just up, uh, there's a couple of unique items that will only be upgraded if you're a champion. So the Dragon Dagger will turn into a Dragon Claws. The uh, Scimitar turns into an, uh, a Tentacle Whip as opposed to an Abyssal. And the, there's one more. The Granite Maul turns into an Elder Maul, as you just saw there. Uh, finally, uh, you can see the timer top right here. Uh, the Fog will bring all champions and armies to the final fighting uh, point, the fight arena, which I'm going to show you now. I believe, uh, where is it again, Chris? The... Shadow. Shadows. Yeah. Yeah, the Graveyard of Shadows, which I'm going to take you to right now. This will be the final fighting location for all champions and armies. Here we are. And there you go. I think that's everything. Uh, sure. Starting locations, weapon upgrades, armor upgrades, everything you need to know if you're inside of the tournament, if you're a champion, and if you're a fighter. Good luck. Oh, no, I lied. There is more. We've actually um, changed some things for champions as well. So if you are a champion, which I am right now, I'm technically Nightinator, uh, I believe that I have a couple of extra benefits. I have the, uh, all damage against me is halved, um, no matter what. All damage is halved instantly. Uh, on top of that, uh, all freezes uh, from Ice Barrage, Blitz, etc., will last half the amount of time. Uh, we've also took the opportunity of fixing Chin Chompers, specifically only in this tournament world, so it's all the same in the rest of the world. But if you don't know, Chin Chompers, area of effect damage, previously didn't calculate defenses. It does now for this world. 
And finally, we've also halved all of healing from things like Blood Barrage, Blood Blitz, etc. So don't expect champions to just stand still and Blood Barrage 50 people and hope for the best. So there you go. Oh, yes. So the cape as well. There should be an amulet, right? No, it's just the cape. Uh, the cape itself. No, it's an amulet. Hmm. Did I leave it in the chest? Oh, that's embarrassing, isn't it? Oh, there's also an amulet that champions will be able to take out the chest. Please make sure that you take out the chest, otherwise you look as silly as I do. They give a huge amount of stats, uh, stat bonuses. We'll tweet out the stat bonuses as well, so you'll be able to see that. Um, and I think that is that actually is everything for you guys to know. So best of luck. Uh, I actually think that legitimately, uh, sick nerd might win, but that's just me. <laughs> so yeah, best of luck. Thanks for watching the sneak peek of the week. Uh, the sneak peek of the week. There you go. Going back to the couch. Hey. So I'm going to give a very quick rundown of what exactly Wilderness Wars is, because I know some of you guys are going, what the heck is this? Um, so Wilderness Wars is an event that we're hosting on Insomnia 61 this weekend, Saturday, 4 p.m. BST, from the RuneScape Twitch channel. We've invited five of our favorite UK local guys um, to play on stage, sitting right next to each other, and we've given them codes. These codes they've been able to give out to their favorite people in the game, or clans in some cases, or friends, or what have you, um, to play for them as their army. They are commanding their army as the captain or the general. So we'll have 250 people on the map going head-to-head -head with those bosses, as you saw, they can kill the bosses to get upgraded gear or, or weapons, um, and they have to go out and be, basically be the last general standing. Um, players who end up killing a general, that is, players who receive a kill message for killing a general, will be awarded 2,500 bucks as a cash prize, and the last standing general will get five grand. Now, if a player ends up killing a general and does the most amount of damage, but dies beforehand, they're ineligible to win that prize. If you are going to do the most damage to a general, you need to stay alive. If you die, that 2,500 bucks is going back and stacking onto the five grand that goes to whichever remaining general stays alive the longest. It's up to them to deal with the money how they please. Um, if Sick Nerd wins and he ends up walking away with 10 grand, he can either take that to the bank or he can <laughs> give it away to the people who helped him bring him to the, to the victory, whatever he pleases to do. Um, <laughs> but again, that's pretty much, um, in a sense, what's happening. The generals, as Mod Wolf mentioned, are essentially going to be walking around as bosses. They're super strong. They can stomp through people, but if they get taken down, by an army of 50 people, um, they lose it for their team. As soon as the general dies, their entire army of 50 dies. They lose. Right? So you might have a 1v1 of two generals last standing in that ring. Yeah. Or it might be a clean sweep. It might have somebody's team run through and just destroy everybody. So, so as a fighter, as much as you want to sit there and kill the other, the other army leaders, if you, you've got to also protect your champion. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you will be out yourself. I think like what might happen is like a champion is going to just run to the corner really far away and then leave their, their minions to do all the bidding for them. <laughs> and just but hide. Then somebody might be on the flank, like a team of like three or four, come by and take out the champion. That's going to be sick. Yeah, Anyways. and to address some of this, the spam I saw, which is like area too small, consider that the number of participants in Wilderness Wars is far, far lower than Deadman yes. Final Hour. Additionally, we're encouraging combat around the Final Hour, prior to the Final Hour, rather, through the advent of the two bosses to get armor, to get weaponry. So yep. I, think, I think the final area will suffice to be more than sufficient. That final area is only there, and it's only so small, just in case people don't fight, realistically. That's why yeah. I've got the fog pushing them together. Um, so hopefully people actually fight. If they don't, I'm going to have to pat them on the back and say, go do something. You're boring. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, if you're a general watching, you need to make sure you've given all your cords out by some point tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, I've told them that. OK, sorry, guys, we're going to move along then. Um, OP says, what causes odd pathing? When clicking to go somewhere, does the game decide the fastest